I'm the luckiest man in the world. Working in sport means that any time I watch any sport, I'm doing research. So that means I get to control the TV remote at home, and isn't that a goal of any man's life? <laughs> All humans want to perform to their potential. Whether you're a professional athlete, working professional, student or parent, whether you're required to perform in sport, in the workplace, in academia, or whatever endeavor you choose, I believe that maximizing your performance may become a priority for you. As a sports scientist that works with professional athletes and teams, I work with people at that high end of the performance scale, not only in their capacity, but also the expectations placed upon them to perform. Now, in order to maximize the performance of these athletes, we start with this very basic formula. Performance equals capacity minus fatigue. Now, to increase someone's capacity or fitness, we must push them to their limits and beyond. However, if this stimulus or stressor is chronically above the limits of their capacity, then the body becomes vulnerable. And this vulnerability can result in an increased risk of injury or a decreased performance. Now, to ensure that we do not put them into this situation, we can monitor them and monitor key variables related to fatigue. And every day, we receive instantaneous data entered by athletes into a web-based app from anywhere in the world. And then we apply basic algorithms to this data to identify when someone is above or below their range of optimal performance, to make recommendations in respect to their training, recovery, rehab, or their readiness to play. Now, success like this doesn't happen overnight. I'm fortunate to have worked with teams of professionals working behind the scenes with these professional athletes to create history by ensuring that they maintain their optimal performance. Because these athletes are always at that breaking point, or potentially that breaking point, due to their extensive training regimes, playing schedules, media and social commitments. But we work collaboratively to determine their exact requirements so hopefully we can reduce the limitations that they come up against. Now, we can't control everything. But the things that we can control, we strive to manage, monitor, and hopefully prevent this breaking point, such as this. This is me, not looking my best, in intensive care after suffering a spontaneous coronary artery dissection and subsequent heart attack that required surgery. Now, I'm very fortunate because only a few percentage of people actually survive a dissection. And as I said at the start, I truly am the luckiest man in the world. Now, I didn't have any of the normal cardiac risk factors, so I attribute stress as the major catalyst for this outcome. Now, here you can see that I'm closely monitored, and for three weeks I was in intensive care. However, when I left, there was no monitoring. I didn't have a follow-up appointment with my cardiologist for another four weeks, and my anxiety was through the roof. I was even too scared to sneeze. I actually went home and spent countless moments and nights thinking every chest pain was the end. And it was during this time that I thought, how about if the monitoring system we apply to professional athletes to ensure that they maintain peak condition could be applied to someone like me with a medical condition. But instead of monitoring variables related to performance, we actually monitored variables that indicated an adverse condition or potentially premature death. Whatever your idea of performance or your desired outcome, how about if we monitored you? to ensure that you are always in the range for optimal performance and give you real-time data so that you could make adjustments, if so, you can stay on that road to the success and the goal that you strive for. For example, someone like me that had a heart attack. If we were to monitor heart rate variability, blood pressure, chest pain, ratings of well-being, and then set up automatic alerts to identify when I was outside the normal range, I am sure that this would have reduced my anxiety and alleviated much of the stress that caused my problems in the first place. Oddly enough, 
a major organization thought it'd be a really good idea to get me, the high-performance monitoring guy that's just had a stress-related heart attack, to give a talk on stress. <laughs> anyway, after the talk, I was talking to an executive, and he was, he was telling me about the next day's leadership meeting. And at this leadership meeting, they were making the major decisions for that company for the next year. So I thought, oh, I asked him, actually. I said, well, what are you doing tonight to prepare? And he was really excited to tell me that, well, we go out to dinner, we have way too much to drink, <laughs> and it's a really late night. OK. <laughs> so what time do you start in the morning? Ah, 7.30 a.m. Hmm. So if my athletes prepared like that for a major game, you know what's going to happen. I'm going to have another major heart attack. <laughs> Poor sleep, increased fatigue, stress. How could they possibly be ready to perform? How can we be sure that they are ready to perform, to make these critical decisions that not only impact the organization, but impact the people around it, the shareholders, the staff, the customers and the clients. See, limitations are not only physiological, they're also cognitive, psychological, and also social. And it's important that we can actually monitor this. See, we have seen an explosion onto the market of wearable technologies. And other portable devices to measure physiological variables that were not really accessible previously. We can measure blood pressure, blood glucose level, markers of immune function, markers of stress, sleep, activity, you name it, we can measure it. But what do we do with this data? I believe in this era of information overload, we are being called upon to do something with this data. As we move beyond the information age to the age of change or transformation, we can make an impact. Technology has enabled us to gather multiple sources of information together that can be customized for every individual. And collaboratively, we can ensure that this data comes to life. So we can follow up and follow through and act in real time. And this is not in the future. This can be done now. Thank you.